witness the great and awesome miracles done by the hand of God, but to them, the current generation, because they have seen with their own eyes the salvation of the Lord. They remember all that he has done to, to bring them into the promised land. Moses also gives instructions on tithing. He says, you shall truly tithe all the increase of your grain that the field produces year by year. You shall eat before the Lord your God in the place where he chooses to make his name abide. The tithe of your grain and your new wine, your oil, of the firstborn of your herds and of your flocks, that you may learn to fear the Lord your God always. The parasha concludes with the laws of the three pilgrim festivals of Passover, Shavuot, and Sukkot, when all should go to see and be seen before God in his holy temple. Because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thine increase and in all the works of thine hands, therefore thou shalt surely rejoice. The Haftor portion comes from Isaiah 54 and 55, which seem to capture the attention of those who might not have grasped the great hope and redemption spoke of in chapter 53. In that the Lord through Isaiah calls out to his beloved, saying, All and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. The Haftor ends with a powerful message of hope, and one can almost say a command of joyfulness. It says, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy, and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. The message of enduring hope and provision continue in the New Covenant. In John 14, chapter 14, verse 21, John says, he who has, or Yeshua says, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. If we continue to choose and to follow his commandments, we will find life, happiness, and love. The scriptures say by this we will know if we love him. If we keep his commandments, if we keep his word, the love of God will be perfected in us. And all the readings for this week tell us that the choice is ours. God will not force us to follow him. He desires willing hearts, and those who willingly follow and honor his commandments will receive hope, protection, guidance, love, and salvation from the darkness that can easily take us prisoner on any unwatched believer. The psalm this week is Psalm 97. It says, The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies around about. His lightnings light the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth, the heavens declare his righteousness, and all the peoples see his glory. Let all be put to shame who serve carved images, who boast of idols. Worship him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. O Lord, you're for you, Lord, you are most high above all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. You who love the Lord hate evil. He preserves the soul of his saints. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. May the Lord rain down his glory today. And may we make ourselves ready to receive it. Amen. Shofarim. We come before you, most holy Abba Father. Abba, we come before you with joy, with adoration, to worship you, 
to be in your presence, to come together as your people, to learn of you, to hear from you, to give ourselves to you, Lord. We thank you for this place, this time, that you have called us to be your people, that we can show you our love and our worship and give ourselves fully to you, your paths, and your plans. Lord, we seek you. We seek to hear from you. And we seek to lay down before you all of our selfish plans and give ourselves fully unto you. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord, that you have called us here to hear the words that you have placed on the rabbi's lips. Lord, open our hearts, our spirits, and our minds to you, Lord, that we may grasp everything that you have for us and that our worship would be a sweet-smelling savor to you today and always. In Yeshua's blessed, holy, remarkable name, amen. Amen, amen. Let us stand together. For how lovely the tents of Jacob and the dwelling places of Israel. Matovi. of salvation. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Shabbat Shalom. We begin the Sudur with the Baruch Hu. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamvorak. Baruch Adonai Hamvorak Le'olam Va'en. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One, for all eternity. V'shamru v'nei Israel. The children of Israel should keep the Shabbat observing it throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Shabbat to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. The blessing of the Mashiach together. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu, ederek ha-Yeshua b'Mashiach Yeshua. Amen. 
Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation in Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Please stand for the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Chavon Malki so Hear, O Yisrael, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Olhecha, b'chol levavko v'chol nafshecha v'chol moldecha, v'hayu havrim ha'eling, asher anoki metzafka ayom alo v'veka, v'shinan tam levenaka, v'yobarta bam, v'shivta k'beveitecha, v'v'lektaka v'aderek, v'shak b'cha v'kumakam, v'v'shar tam l'ilta y'decha, v'hayu l'yitztavol b'inanecha, v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'v'
Let his great name be blessed forever and to all eternity. Blessed, praised, and glorified, exalted, extolled, and honored, magnified and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed is he, though he be high above all blessings and songs, praises and consolations, which are uttered in the world, and all say, Amen. May who makes peace in his high places make peace upon us and upon all Yisrael, and say, Amen. Yit gadal v'yit kadash merobam. Bama dira kyote, v'yomek malkate bakai kono v'yomek kono v'kai duko b'Yisrael. Ba glau uvizman kariv rimru. Amen. Yesh meroba, me barak le alam o me o mayam. Yit barak, vish tabak, vits per arv, vits romam. Vietna save it a darv, it a lay of the lel, shmerekusha berhu. La ilmin kubrakata, vishrata, tushbrakata. Menaki mata, damiram, ba ma vimru. Amen. And as we go into worship, let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, say shalom bim rama, hu ya say shalom aleinu, ve yacho Yisrael, vimru, himru, amen. Oh, say shalom bim rama. Say shalom aleinu ve'acho Yisrael v'ibru himru amen. Yase shalom, yase shalom, shalom aleinu v'acho Yisrael. Peace on high places, make peace for Israel and for all mankind, and say, Amen.
mysteries unknown are known to you. All wisdom is yours to reveal. You hold in your hands the days of all men. Our life and breath is yours to give. And we will respond. Stones make a 
Bless your name, Yeshua, for you are the great and mighty King of Kings. We honor you this day, the Shabbat, and bring glory to your name. We invite your Ruach in this place. We invite your spirit to move. I pour my 
King of kings, we ask that you fill this place, that you fill our hearts and our minds, Lord God, with your Holy Spirit, with your Ruach HaKodesh, Father, that you, Elohim, would be present with each and every one of us today, that you'd continue to guide us and direct us to make us who you've called us to be, leading us on the path of righteousness toward the promise that you have before us. We worship you, we honor you, we glorify your name. En kamok Adonai, B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, the congregation said. Vahi ben Shua HaAron. Moshe would say, Arise, Lord, let your enemies be scattered. Let them that hate you flee from you, for out of Zion shall go forth the Torah. And the word of the Lord from Yerushalayim. Blessed be he when his holiness gave the Torah to his people, Yisrael. Ya'amod, Yehuda ben Eliyahu la Torah. Baruchot Adonai Barach, Baruch Adonai Hambarach Leolam Va'ed. Baruchot Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Bachar Benu Mikol, Ha'amim Benatan Lanu et Torato, Baruchot Adonai Noten HaTorah. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One, for all eternity. 
Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all peoples and who gave us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Yeladim. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher natan lanu Torah emet, v'chayu olam nata betochenu, baruch atah Adonai noten ha-Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and has planted eternal life within us. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. V'zot ha-Torah, sher sam Moshe lifnei b'nei Yisrael, Al Moshe, and this is the Torah that Moses placed before the children of Israel at the command of the Lord through Moses' hand. John 1 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. This Torah scroll is the Word of God. Yeshua is this Word. John the Immerser said in John 1 29, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. God's Word is written on lambskin. Yeshua is this Lamb. John 12 32, Yeshua said, And I, if I am lifted from the earth, I'll draw all people to myself. The two wooden poles holding this Torah scroll are called Eitz Chaim, or Tree of Life. Yeshua was sacrificed on two wooden poles some 2,000 years ago for our sins. Amen. Eitz Chaim Hi, Lamach HaZakim Ba, Botomchei HaMushar, Darcher, Dokarne Noam, Vekol, Netevatecha, Shalom, Eshevein Adonai Lecha, Vanashu V'Kadesh, Imenu Kakadem. It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it. Happy are those who support it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Cause us to return to you, Adonai, and we shall return. Renew our days as of old. Revelation 2.7 reads, You as an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the congregations. To him who overcomes, I'll give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. He sure was, he is, and he shall ever be, this word of the one living God that we look upon this day for our salvation. Amen. You may be seated.
So how many are ready to study the word this morning? You know, I've taught in the past about the blesses, the blessings and the curses that Moshe talked about. Um, this morning I'm going to go into some other things um, about this, this uh, par, uh, parasha portion. Uh, the title of it is C. Um, when you look at blessings and curses, you can also look at it uh, from this perspective, that as a result of Adam and Eve sinning, all humans, all physical people will perish. And depending upon your choices, um, you may be blessed to have life everlasting, um, and that life everlasting comes as a result of believing in Yeshua, which is a blessing, and that's the spiritual aspects of it. So we see implications, and we don't have time to get into this this morning, but implications of commandments and instruction um, of the law that applies to our physical being, uh, which also includes our soul and our physical presence, uh, but then also there's uh, commandments associated with the spirit. So, uh, when you look at blessings and curses, uh, humanity is cursed as a result of the original sins, um, but they are blessed if they choose to accept Yeshua as the Mashiach, as the second Adam, who restored the things that were lost and uh, allow for us to have life everlasting in the spirit, I mean. Okay, so, this week, the text, and, <clears throat> sorry, this mess this up if I move this out of the way a little bit? No? Okay. This week and the next few weeks, the parashot contain the majority of the commandments in Davarim or words. Now, speaking of words, let's start with a comparison between mana, manna, and God's word. Turn with me to the book of Bamibar, Numbers 11, verses 6 through 10, which says this. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. And the manna was as coriander seed, and the color thereof as the color of bedellium. And the people went about and gathered it, and ground it in mills, or beat it in a mortar, and baked it in pans, and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent, and the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. So we see here about our souls were dried away. Yeah, how many know that you have a physical soul, right? And that, that soul is either going to experience life everlasting or it will be a result of, of, uh, of judgment in the end days. How many know that? So, so we have our physical beings of which our soul, and so we, the, the children of Israel, B'nai Israel, they're talking about uh, their soul being uh, dried away. They, their inner being is not happy with what God had given them. Now, did you hear and did you see? And when I say see, were you following along with the Bible as we read the verses this morning? Did you see what they did relative, and did you hear what they said on how they treated uh, the manna, the children of Israel? First, they collected it, they prepared it, they cooked it, and they ate it. And they also complained about it, and they murmured all about it. John 1.14 says this, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So Yeshua is the word. How many know Yeshua is the word? And manna for us. John 6, 43 through 58 says the following. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father, which hath sent me, draw him. And I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man thereof that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead, he that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Today, you need to collect, you need to prepare, you need to cook, and you need to eat the words of God with his blood, which is the essence of Yeshua. The lesson here is, if you hear Yeshua's words, you will not get into trouble with the beliefs of the world in these end times that are contrary to God. But the words must get into your spirit, as I shared in the last two yeshivas um, through the Bible study. You get it through reading your scripture and, and hearing the scripture, um, receiving the correct interpretation either by, by teachers or by those by yourself and the correct interpretation. You also, uh, through the scriptures, uh, you learn how to correct the application. Today, in, now, today's barasha is called Ra'e. Ra'e is see. We as believers have to be able to see in the spirit also. How many know that? As you read through the scriptures of the Old Testament, you see that in the, in the, in the Tanakh, the Old Testament, the Torah, the Nevi'im, and the Ketuvim, all of those instructions are really related to the flesh, either the flesh of the physical, uh, which includes the physical body and also the soul, and commandments and instruction on how to address the issues that are confronted um, in those days. Um, however, Yeshua, how many know where Yeshua's kingdom is? Yeshua's kingdom is where? It is not of this earth, right? Which is a fleshly thing. It is what? It's a spiritual kingdom, right? And so that's how we gain access to his kingdom through our spirit, our soul, which interacts with the Ruach HaKodesh. And through that, after accepting Yeshua as the Mashiach, we are then part of the royal priesthood in God, Yeshua's kingdom, spiritual kingdom. Being able to see in the spirit also. John 6, 59 through 63 says this. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirits and they are life. See, even the murmuring uh, was existing in that day. That's why you can see where Yeshua is our bread, our bread of life. Amen? When you gather the word each week for your consumption, you need to know that it is for your spiritual nourishment. In times past, B'nai Israel, the children of, of Israel, would get tired of it. As discussed, tired is an issue of the flesh, and thus understanding will not come if you have issues with the flesh. Or they would look for it and they couldn't find it. So you have these two conditions that exist. Amos 8, 11 and 12 says this in the Nevi'im. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, 
that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but a hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. Now this morning, you need to ask yourself this question. Where are you today? Are you tired of the word, the word of God? Or are you tired of looking for it? These are all conditions that can occur. Well, if you are, and you, ask, and you answer that question in this way, then you are running the risk of making choices in the flesh that may not be right for you in God's eyes, in the spirit, and subjecting you to following other ways that may seem right in your flesh, both physical and your soul, but are not right. Davarim 12, 29 through 31 says this. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whither thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. After that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination to the Lord which he hateth have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fire to their gods. Now these verses discuss the prohibitions against copying the ways of the Canaanites. So ask yourself this question. Are these examples that we read in scripture just history? And we're reading it for historical accounts? Are they examples that, that we can apply? Do these examples seem to be right? Can you think of some comparisons today? I'm challenging you all to sort of think about the scriptures as you read them, really trying to see how it applies to you today in the 21st century. So how is this compared today in scripture? Think about it. Think about something that, that comes to mind that fits into the category of these scriptures then try to, and that's part of the interpretation, um, and then how does it apply to you in your life? Now the comparison that you come up with, think and ask yourself, does it go against God's word? Is your interpretation or your example based upon opinion or is it based upon fact? Those are things that you need to weigh as you look at scripture and look at interpretation and then how you apply it. Now, let's look at the warnings. Let's look at some warnings here about scripture. Davarim chapter 12 verse 32 says this. What things soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto nor diminish from it. One may not improve the Torah by adding new commandments. What human intelligence considers an honor to God may be an abomination in his, God's eyes. For example, the one that we saw here, the way we read about how they came up with ways to worship these idols, and yet it was an abomination to God. Uh, we can see different kinds of religion that have statues, uh, statues that represent um, different deities or different other ones that that they're worshiped to or prayed to, um, bowing down to idols, all of those things are not right in God's eyes because God is a jealous God. He doesn't want to have anything that's treated as an idol. It draws away from him because God is spirit and we worship him in spirit, not in the physical. It's natural for us to draw to the physical because we spend most of our time in the physical. But we are spiritual beings. How many of you know that? You need the revealed will of God through his word, no less and no more. We see this repeated in the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verses 19, 18 uh, through 19, which says this. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his parts out of the book of life 
and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in the, this book. There's warnings in the Tanakh and there's warnings in the Habritic Hadashah, both of which warnings associated with adding and subtracting. Now that we've talked about God's instruction, God's Torah, let us turn to our attention to the Nevi'im or the books of the prophets um, and talk about uh, some of the prophets uh, themselves as they're addressed in the book of Davarim, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 13, verses 1 through 5, which says this. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall, ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he hath spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. So let's, before I continue on, let's, let's pause for a moment and talk about the purpose of the prophets. The prophets, um, one section of the purpose of the prophets prophets was this, is that when B'nai Israel, when the children of Israel would stray too far away from God's word, who would God send? Prophets. He would send to draw them back, to woo them back to God. And he would, he would, the prophets were not liked. They were not loved. Many times they were killed because they were calling out the sins that were happening because they strayed too far away from God's instruction. A false prophet, the ancient sages stated, even an acknowledged prophet is automatically proven false if he claims to have been sent by God to advocate any form of idolatry, uh, which uh, could be a violation of the commandments of God. Now let's look at one of the Ten Commandments. And these commandments are, are uh, one of the Ten Commandments, which is the third commandment, is, is talked about in Davarim, Deuteronomy chapter 5, and it's repeated in Shemot, Exodus chapter 20. Let's turn our attention to Davarim chapter 5, verses 1 through 6, which says this. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that ye may learn them and keep and do them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb, the Lord made not his covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive this day. The Lord talked with you face to face in the mount out of the midst of the fire. I stood between the Lord and you at that time to show you the word of the Lord. For ye were afraid by reason of fire and went not up into the mount, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Or... So we talked about somebody adding a prophet that would add to the scriptures. What about a prophet uh, claimed and or claims since prophets are around today? How many know the prophets are around today? How many know it's scriptural to have prophets around today? The difficulty is distinguishing or discerning what's a, what's a true prophet or what's a false prophet. And how many know that prophecy is a gift? Okay. So... Uh, how many know about the seed of a prophet? What the purpose of that is? It's a debate as to whether or not the seed of the prophet even exists because that's a global type of role that's played. But it will be addressed in these end times. So looking at claims that, that they are here around today, that any precept of the Torah should be abrogated or perm, uh, permanently, meaning taking it away from scripture, causes them to be caused, categorized as a false prophet. That is, they are subtracting uh, from God's commands. 
Uh, an example, in today's example, how many have heard of the doctrine of I am not under grace, but I'm under law? How many have heard that? Right? In some denominations, that, that is big. You know, that can be categorized, that doctrine in those words, and you live by those words, that doctrine can be deemed to be subtracting from God's instruction. Because if you just live by those words, you're not understanding what the meaning is behind what is law and what is grace and the application and the interpretation. Now, Yeshua, in Davarim 18 through 15, who was identified as... Do you have that? No. So Deuteronomy eighteen fifteen says. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. So we know that Yeshua came in that, in that vein, and he's greater than Moshe, right? We read that in what? The book of the, book of the Gentiles? The Hebrews. The book of the Hebrews. And he had to address the Yeshua... In his day, because he could, in that day, was being subject to the sages who were saying that he was adding and subtracting from Scripture, he had to address that and address these accusations by the powers that be during that day. How many know that? He was constantly being challenged as a false prophet. Matthew 5.17 says this, Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets, I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So when you look at that, those are buzzwords in Judaism in that day of destroying, meaning adding or subtracting because you're destroying the Torah, or you are, are um, uh, causing it to be looked at differently, and that's what they were accusing of. They were, they were accusing him of uh, adding and subtracting. But he came to fulfill, he came to complete what was not yet completed. Because a transition from the physical commands to the spiritual commands, from the physical realm to the spiritual realm, occurred at the place where Yeshua landed some 2,000 years ago to address the issue of forgiveness of sins. So, does warnings of the risk of being exposed to additions and, subtra and subtractions, as these examples were, do they apply today? Well, let's look. Let's look at the Brit Kadashah. And let's look at Matthew 24, verses 3 through 5, and verses 23 through 27, which says this. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now I'm going to pause here for a second because when we look at, when we look at Judaism, rabbinic Judaism rejected Yeshua because he didn't come in the form of the Messiah they were looking for. They were looking for a physical Messiah to establish the kingdom again, right? Okay. Mashiach ben David. They were looking for him. You know... They're looking for him today. How many know that? And when they're looking for him today, they're still looking for a, mis a physical Messiah that will come and save the kingdom, right? So, think about it. What if somebody shows up and starts moving in miraculous ways? 
and is, is actually received by Israel, received by the Jewish communities, that he's performing many miracles and that they believe that, that, that he is the Messiah. How many people are going to follow that? How many people, um, I heard just recently that, that 20 years ago there was a rabbi in, in ultra-Orthodox Judaism uh, called uh, Schneerson, and, and he, uh, they still believe he's alive, still alive, 20 years later. Well, unlike our Messiah, check the gravesite, dig him up, see if he's there. Go dig up the grave of our Messiah, is he there? No, he's what? He's risen. Say it. He's risen. That's the difference. That's the miraculous thing. And when he was raised, he just wasn't raised himself. What else happened? A few saints got raised. That was on purpose, not only for, for satisfying the, the Feast of First Fruits, but I believe it was done to, to refute any kind of doubt that could be seated that the resurrection was just for him and not for us. It confirms that we too will be raised in the end days. Amen? So, others in these end days will have other agendas than God's. 2 Peter 2, 1 and 3 and verse 18 says this. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring indemnable heresies even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. How many want to live in the, in the spirit? If you want to live in the spirit, there's no need for you to buy any books. Any books of authors, any books of writers, any books that are coming out with these new prophetic ideas of fulfillment of things. You don't need them because all of those are, a lot of those are feeding the flesh, not the spirit. If we focus in on the spirit, what's the main thing we're supposed to be focusing in on? Seeking God's presence and seeking God's return. So how are you to address, to address these issues and events that come up around false prophets? 1 John 4, 1 through 6 says this. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And, that, and this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So what are we now faced with? The same issues and events as in Yeshua's day, but there's one thing that's been added, and that is deception and pride. Deception and pride to the equation, which will test the hearts of men and women and their knowledge of God's word, which is very, very important. Matthew 15, 8 through 14 says this. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? 
But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Blind leading the blind. How many know that exists today? The ditch can be many things. The ditch can be rabbinic Judaism. It can be Christian doctrines. It can be both religious customs in Judaism and Christianity and in other religions, customs and traditions. We need to rely on instruction from the Habrit Kadasha, the New Testament. Yeshua is the one who Yeshua is the one who is the word that is made flesh. He just didn't interpret and apply God's word. He is the word, and his disciples help us as rabbis for us in the Berit Hadashah to understand Yeshua's words as they walked with him and understand the scriptures, the Torah, the Nevi'im, the Kituvim, to explain who Yeshua is in Yeshua's Yeshiva. That's why I call our Brit Kadashar our Talmud, because it is, it is an explanation and interpretation and, and clear, clarity as to the, the scriptures in the Tanakh. And, and it's spoken by those uh, that walked with him in those days. Luke 24, 25 through 27 says this. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now remember, the difference between the way we believe and rabbinic Jews believe goes to the matter of internal versus an external religion. Rabbinic Judaism is an external religion. You can be a really good rabbinic Jew, but inside you can be a very dark person because it's an external, it's worked out, you see it uh, in, the, in the appearances of what they act through versus the matter of an internal religion, which is Yeshua's religion, which has an impact on the inside. And through that impact on the inside, uh, it comes out externally on those that believe in him. So internal application of Yeshua and external applications of rabbinic Judaism. Luke 16, 22 through 31 says this. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us, that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto them, unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Also, in comparison, this gulf of external religion doesn't work. It is internal applications that result in salvation taught through the complete Torah that is placed inside, and the result is the power in his name being expressed through new creatures in Yeshua. Luke 10, 17 through 20 says this. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. 
Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. So we've read the part about deception, and now you see the part of pride. That some that move in the giftedness of the spirit move in a movement of pride. Uh, priding themselves in what happens. But we are not, as believers, to be proudful or prideful in what, how we move in the Spirit. We are just to be thankful that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So in closing, rejoice as to who you are, who your soul belongs to, and rejoice as you spiritually interact with the Ruach HaKodesh, which is Yeshua. Amen. It's our duty to praise the master of all, to ascribe greatness to the author of creation. For he's made us unlike the nations of the land and has not placed us like the families of the earth. He's not made our portions like the air and our lot like their multitudes. And we bend the knee and bow and acknowledge our thanks before the king over kings, the holy one, blessed be he. He stretches out heaven and establishes earth's foundation. And the seat of his glory is in the heavens above and the presence of his power is in the most exalted heights. He is our God, there is none other. True is our king, there is nothing beside him, as it is written in his Torah. And you shall know this day and take to your heart that the Lord, he is God in the heavens above and on the earth below, there is none other. Amen.
God, walk with us every day. Be with us, Lord. Surround us with your presence. Lead us, Lord, by your hand. Be the light in the darkness around us. Speak, Lord God, your voice. Guide us. Show us the path before us, Lord. We honor you. We bless you. We praise your name. You are the light for every step. You're the giver of every breath we take. And Lord God, we live for you. We cast our crowns at your feet. We honor you this day. Shem Yeshua Mashiach. Amen.
course, uh, the picnic is today. Uh, so we will begin at 3 o'clock. Uh, so I'll give you a little bit of time to, you know, help, uh, obviously help set up, but also uh, go home quickly if you need to. Uh, but we'll be starting at 3, and uh, like Rabbi just did, we'll continue to pray for no rain. It, it does seem uh, via radar that God is already doing that. Um, if, any, if anything does come, it does seem it's going to be only 3 o'clock to 3.30. After that, it looks pretty uh, clear. So uh, God's already moving and keeping the tornado stuff away from us, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, uh, we started three. Uh, Vera just mentioned to me if anybody has pop tabs. Okay, and that's in the, one of the rooms. It means that. Gotcha. Awesome. Uh, and then the only other announcement I have is that we have yeshiva this week, uh, seven thirty to nine. Uh, so just be thinking of that, and uh, I'd like to see you there. And Hannah. Awesome. That was great. All right. Well, uh, obviously, we'll wait to say the bracha uh, later today at 3 o'clock. Do you want to do it right now? All right. We'll say it today or, or, or together right now. So as we say, uh, bracha. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam ha-motzi lecha min ha-retz ba-shem Yeshua ha-mashiach. Amen. All right. See you in a little bit.